not thorn is a small uh, tree or uh, shrub. It is an invasive that came from Europe and it turns our native forest into these thorny thickets. This is, should be very open and it would be very difficult for me to take a walk into here because it is so uh, growing so thickly in the underbrush. Without the insects and natural competitors that uh, keep it in check in its native Eurasia, it is growing unchecked here in Michigan. This is glossy buckthorn, which has serrated, slightly serrated leaves. This is common buckthorn. The leaves are a little bit bigger and the edges are smooth. Don't worry too much about distinguishing between the two species of buckthorn. They are both invasive. Uh, they both cause the same environmental damage and they're both treated or controlled in the same way. The inner bark of this buckthorn is bright orange. Uh, the bark here is smooth and almost looks like a cherry tree when it's younger and when it gets older it gets a little corkier and rougher. You can see where it is starting to produce berries. These berries will become purple in the fall this is what the birds eat, and then it makes the birds sick. It gives them diarrhea. Uh, but from the plant's perspective, they poop it out in a little packet of fertilizer. This is how the plant spreads. A nice example of a very small buckthorn that we can still pull up. It tends to have fairly shallow roots. They're black. Uh, and when it is small like this, a couple feet tall, you can often pull it up. Was completely covered with buckthorn, pretty much as a monoculture. And you can see the amount of buckthorns that we cut and dumped in brush piles. We will be coming back when the weather is appropriate to burn these brush piles because there's more than we want for habitat. Uh, and now that the buckthorn is gone, the native vegetation is starting to come back. We have swamp cabbage and a lot of other native plants that belong here. Blue Heron Headwaters Conservancy has starter kits to help homeowners control woody invasive species. These starter kits contain a chemical resistant plastic bottle with a dripper cap that can be closed. We have instructions inside for the various species that can be controlled with this. Also some chemical resistant gloves and labels for the bottles. Species can be controlled with concentrated glyphosate. We use glyphosate uh, comes in many brands. Shoreclear is one that sells it in small bottles. You can also get it in larger containers with different brands. Most homeowners just need a very small bottle like this. To prepare the bottles, we do this over a secondary containment system to capture any spills. That could be as simple as a box lined with a plastic bag. I pour the herbicide, the Shoreclear, into this plastic bottle and I'm pouring it so that it is up to this line half, halfway, uh, filling the bottle halfway. After you have filled the bottle halfway with glyphosate, fill, fill it up the rest of the way with distilled water. Sometimes well water can be too hard and interfere with the herbicide. So we use distilled, wa uh, distilled water. Uh, Blue Heron Headwaters has put a little bit of dye inside the bottle already so that you can see the herbicide when it is put on the plant because the herbicide itself is a clear oily liquid that would be difficult to see. You just clip the stem at the ground level and put a drop of herbicide on the cut stump. cut bigger buckthorn like this. Loppers can work well. And then put the herbicide on the cut stump. You only need to put the herbicide on the outside edge. It does not need to go on the inside because the outside bark is where the herbicide is being drawn down to the roots. Once we have cut and treated this, 
the native plants, the skunk cabbage, the Virginia creeper, all of these are able to grow. The trillium and jack in the pulpit. Uh, without treating the buckthorn, these will all be crowded out and die. So this is a good example of what happens when you do not put herbicide on the cut stump after cutting a large stump of buckthorn. You can see here that there was some buckthorn that was cut. Um, and for whatever reason, the person who cut it was did not put herbicide on the cut stump. And so the tree grows back just fine. It grows back as a bush. We now have a many stemmed tree. These are all gonna grow 20 feet tall. Uh, this is showing why we need to be putting herbicide on the cut stump. Simply cutting the stump without herbiciding it is not enough to kill the plant.